What's up, everybody? This is Alex Christopher with The Duran, and I'm here with Alexander McCurse, editor-in-chief of The Duran, and today we're going to be taking a look at a U.S. citizen charged with espionage in Russia. All right, Alexander, we have Paul Whelan, and uh, he's been charged. I think that that news came today. Um, so, you know, he's, he's, official, he's officially been charged for spying. For the U.S. in Russia, he was in Russia supposedly for a wedding, for one of his Marine buddies' weddings. Um, he was apprehended. He was placed in prison. And uh, it seems that now he is being charged with espionage, or he has been charged with espionage. And uh, we're going to now go through a very lengthy process, a very lengthy trial process. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of political uh, you know, talking, a lot of diplomatic channels being open to see what they're going to do with, with Paul Whelan. And the part that's interesting, I think, to me and, and to our viewers is also a lot of the news channels in the U.S., specifically Fox, is, is playing this story a lot. And they're ca- kind of trying to, to sort through a, a lot of the, the fog to see if this guy really is a spy or if this is some sort of ploy by Russia, maybe to use this guy as, as, as an exchange for Maria Butina. Or something along those lines. Maria Bettina being the the young Russian woman who has been uh, been placed in prison in the United States, but not for spying, for violating the Fire Act. So there is a distinction there. Anyway, get, give us the latest update on what's going on with Paul Whelan, and then let's get into some of the. I want I want you to really deep dive into some of the the reasons you think this may be a legitimate espionage case. And I don't want to give yeah. too much of you know what you think is going on here, but. But to take our viewers through this. Right. The, the first thing to say is that I, I think that there's no doubt at all that he's been charged. There's been an official confirmation, a semi-official confirmation of that by the Russian Interfax News Agency, which is extremely well informed about these matters. Apparently, his lawyer is now trying to get him bailed, which I don't think there's any possibility of him getting bail. And most important of all, the US ambassador has gone to see him. Now, that is, to my mind, a very strong indication that he was working for the American government. And in fact, that he he was almost certainly working um, for the American government as a spy, because for the ambassador, for the embassy, the U.S. embassy, to be so involved and so quickly in establishing contact with him is the strongest possible sign, to my mind, that um, he is one of their own. The other thing that I think strongly points to him being a spy is that the Russians are putting out that he was caught in the act, that he was caught red-handed doing something. Of course, we don't know what it is, and that this is, in fact, why he has been he was arrested and charged as a spy and why he is now facing the legal processes that you spoke about now can i just say a few things about this which is that of course the fact that he is a spy um i suspect is something that the russians will have suspected for quite a long time he's been going backwards and forwards to russia since 2007 He's got a military background. He's an ex-Marine. He's also the head of a security company. Uh, uh, he's sorry, the, the head of security for an automobile parts right. company, which apparently does uh, business with Russia. That sounds very strange to me, but that sounds to me rather like a cover story to enable him to travel to Russia on a regular basis. And obviously, he's got social contacts of some sort in Russia. So... Um, I think that he's been working for the U.S. government there. He's probably been in contact with people, keeping an eye on him. And I think they caught him doing whatever it was that he was doing and they've arrested him. And they that, you know, that they probably got quite a strong case against him. Now, it is important to say that the fact that he is a spy does not mean that he was not also arrested in order to create a situation where the Russians might exchange him for some Russians that are being held in the United States. An obvious person is Maria Butina, and you are absolutely right to stress that she is not a spy, and no one is in fact suggesting that she is a spy. She is somebody who was charged completely wrongly, in my opinion, 
for breaching the FARA, the, uh, uh, the foreign agents uh, legislation. Another possibility is, is this man, Victor Bout, who ran a, a Russian, uh, who ran a, um, a transport, um, air, air transport company, who the US accuses of being some gigantic arms dealer. I should say, I, I've looked into that story very carefully. Uh, I don't think he was any kind of arms dealer on anything like the scale the Americans say, and I certainly don't think he was any kind of lord of war or anything like that. But uh, it's known that the Russians have been concerned about him and were con very concerned about the way he was arrested whilst he was travelling abroad. And I think the Russians may be wanting to exchange uh, this spy for various people, Putin obviously being one, Bout being another possibility, there may be others. But I think, last but not least, the Russians want to send a signal to the United States, which is to tell the United States, look, we know who your spies are. We will not tolerate spying of this kind in Russia itself. And obviously, if you go down the road of picking on our citizens in the way that you have been doing, on a pretty systematic basis over the last few years. Well, two people can play at that game. R uh, Americans who go to Russia and who do uh, uh, bad things can be arrested also. And who knows, we might also have a long reach and we might be able to reach people outside our country too. So I think this has multiple uh, uh, um, um, explanations. We don't yet know the whole story. I think this is something, something to watch very, very carefully. But I think the Russians have thought this through and game planned it very carefully. I'm going to read you something from the New York Times when they carried this uh, this article, and I want you to comment on it, Alexander. And I'm going to I'm going to read it to you right now. Rosebalt a Russian news agency close to the security services quoted an unidentified intelligence source on Wednesday as saying that Mr. Whelan had been apprehended during a meeting with a Russian citizen in his room at the Metropole Hotel in Moscow. He is accused of trying to recruit this person to obtain classified information about staff members at various Russian agencies, the account said. Mr. Whelan was arrested five minutes after receiving a USB stick containing a list of all the employees at a classified security agency, the report said. This is from the New York Times. What do you make of this? Well, I think it's entirely possible. And can I make a point that not, not so very long ago, we were getting on uh, uh, through the Bellingcat website. They were publishing all sorts of information about um, uh, Russian, um, alleged Russian GRU operatives. And they were claiming that they'd obtained this information by uh, uh, through open source material. Now, the Russians made it pretty clear that they believed that Bellingcat was getting that information from intelligence services. And it could very well be that this is exactly what we're seeing here, that in fact, this was an attempt by the US through one of its agents to obtain classified information about um, um, various people who work for, for, for Russian agencies. That seems to me entirely plausible. I have no difficulty believing it. I think that's quite likely to be true. What I would add, however, is that I strongly suspect from the way that story is described that this was a sting. I mean, it looks to me like a sting. It looks to me as if this person, I mean, you know, if, uh, if this setup is true, that this person who passed him the USB stick was on, was working for Russian uh, intelligence or counterintelligence, for the FSB, in other words, and that uh, um, um, a trap was laid for Wieland and he was caught. Is it in Russia historically, uh, you may be able to shed some light on this, historically speaking, does does Russia have a history of apprehending normal citizens? Um, you, you know, like like a lot of people say what China is doing right now with the Huawei case and what's happening there, that some Chinese are apprehending business people and stuff like that in order to kind of, you know, an eye for an eye kind of thing. But I think Russia doesn't operate like that. And I think and you can just shed some light on this. No, it never has operated. I mean, I want to make it very clear. Not only I mean, does they Russia could apprehend, not they could apprehend a citizen because they have a thousands, hundreds of thousands yeah. of Americans, you know, exactly. traveling and living exactly. there. 
it, it seems uh, out of out of the ordinary for Russia to do well, this. To, to it, it, it would be completely out of character. It, it, it would represent a fundamental change in Russian policy. I mean, I, I, I read Russian history, and I, I know I'm very well informed about the, in, the history of their intelligence and counterintelligence activities. I have never known the Russians to do something like that. I mean, whenever they have arrested somebody and charged them with espionage, it has always been for that reason. They've never used that charge for any, any, uh, any, uh, you know, it's never been used, set up in that way. And they've never used legal devices to essentially kidnap people. That is simply not the way the Russian state has ever worked. And I don't believe it is how it works now. I mean, they didn't do that in the Stalin era. And they certainly wouldn't do it today. What do you make of the fact that Whelan was uh, was a Marie, but he was discharged for larceny? Does, is, does that does that make him? I'm trying to get into how this guy might have might have ended up being a spy. Does that make him vulnerable for, for to, to become to move into espionage, having kind of that 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 thing on your record, and then the spy agencies come and they say, okay, look, you have this history, you've had this misfortune. You know, we could provide you with, with an out, with a better life. Well, well, the short answer is it, absolutely that happens a great deal. In fact, can I just say something? I mean, uh, um, I understand that a lot of these sort of cyber war be, uh, um, agencies and counter agencies routinely employ people who were convicted hackers and who, who are told, you know, you will work for us and do, you put all your skill set at our disposal, or we will send you to prison. And the same could happen with a, with a Marine who got himself into trouble, uh, um, um, apparently carried out theft. They could very easily be blackmailed. But there is another possibility which one should never overlook with these sort of cases, which is that this is a cover story. In other words, that, he, that this um, incident never really happened, and that they have constructed a false history for him in order to try to conceal what he actually is, which is an undercover operative of the intelligence services. The United States regularly recruits uh, um, intelligence officers from the military because military people are patriotic and reliable. If I can give a famous example of a US Marine who some people think had some connections with the U.S. intelligence agencies. Lee Harvey Oswald is exactly it falls into exactly that definition. He 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 was apparently um, at some point uh, um, contacted by U.S. intelligence, but of course he was a wild character and, and he went into all sorts of strange things and he ended up killing Kennedy. But I, I'm not suggesting Whelan is anything like that. But as I said, it's quite possible that he was simply recruited as a Marine and that a false story was created around him. Maybe killed Kennedy. <laughs> Maybe. Because I, yeah, I, I, I can see the comments coming let's, right now. Let's, yeah, let's not yeah, go down that rabbit hole. Let's not go down that rabbit hole. Okay. <laughs> but, but what's let's, next legally speaking, Alexander? I mean, I read some well, articles well, as to what's happening with his lawyer. Russia has given him a lawyer. He has a lawyer. Yeah, absolutely. A representation. Russia has, he has a lawyer. I but mean, I hear it's going to be a lawyer. long, long process. Take us through absolutely. the steps now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, of course, the first thing to say is apparently he is denying that he is a spy. So at the moment, he is uh, pleading not guilty. But um, the the Russians will undoubtedly prosecute him. I don't think there's any question at all that he will be uh, refused bail. He will be held in custody. Um, there will be uh, probably a hearing at some stage, um, unless, uh, and at the same time, parallel to all of this, there will be frantic negotiations going on between the U.S. authorities and the Russian authorities with the U.S. authorities, especially if he is a spy, trying to arrange some means to get him back. Because I think this is a very important, Maria Butina uh, was not a spy. Victor Bell was not a spy. They have no information to give away. Um, if uh, Whelan is a spy, as I think, then he has lots of information to give away. And the longer he stays in Russia, the more likely he is to do that. So they won't want to leave him in Russia, not just because they have a very strong loyalty to their own people, but because doing so would be a major security risk. So um, we, we will see lots going on 
both on the legal front, both on the political front. Do you think that Russia would, would risk uh, apprehending this man if there was any chance he was not a spy? Because I'm trying to play devil's advocate. What if he's not a spy? That then, then mm. Russia really, really screwed it up big time here. But do you think they would they would have taken? I mean, you said they've probably been they've had this their eye on this guy for a long time. What do yes. you think the chances are that they that they messed up here? I think very, very small. I think they're very, very remote indeed. I think if I'm going to be straightforward about this, I link this to the I, I think there's a high probability that this is connected to the Bellingcat story, uh, which, you know, leaked all those names of the GRU agents, which I, I, I found very strange. I think that will have alerted the Russians to the fact that there is an American agent or a group of agents who are operating here. I think they probably had their eye on Whelan for a very, very long time. I think after that, they decided that they were going to rein him in. And that's exactly what they've done. Can you simplify that really quickly, Alexander? Bellingcat linked yeah. GRU agents. Yeah. And, yeah. These, and, and yeah. then yeah. Russia okay. said, okay, these are the guys that we need to keep okay. an okay. eye out for that are getting these lists. Okay. I mean, these guys are getting lists from, okay. from Russia. Let, 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 let's, let's go back a few months. Dissect let's this a little. Back. Dissect this a little. Yeah, let, 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 let's reel this back a few months. If you, if you recall, there was a, 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 a moment, a, a time when Bellingcat was publishing uh, what they said were passports and passport details of Russian GRU officers. And they were saying that they could find out who these GRU officers were by checking their passports. And they were coming up with all sorts of information about the identities of people who they said were GRU officers. Now, the Russians responded by not either admit, you know, by denying that that information could be obtained through open sources and by also saying that Bellingcat was obtaining its, in, its information from intelligence agencies. Now, let me stress, I don't know whether that is true or not. I have no way of knowing whether that is true or not. But this incident at the Metropole Hotel does look rather like an American intelligence officer trying to obtain from Russia the same sort of information about the kind of people who work for various Russian uh, security agencies that Bellingcat was publishing a few months ago. So I think the Russians were alerted through Bellingcat, through the, the Bellingcat publications, to the fact that leaks of some sort were going on. And this looks to me rather like the Russians acting to close those leaks. I, I don't mean that they didn't, they hadn't had their suspicions about Whelan for a long time. But I think this would have made them look at Whelan more closely. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense, mm. actually. And then finally, Alexander, uh, Putin being a, a former intelligence uh, guy, this is pretty much right down his alley as to how to deal with oh. the situation, correct? He will have been fully informed about all of this. He will have, I mean, make no mistake about this. I mean, when a, an American spy is arrested on Russian territory, uh, the president of Russia is kept fully informed. And uh, because this is always a political thing as well as a security one. So there is no question about it. Putin is entirely in on the loop on this one. All right. Alexander Beckhurst, editor in chief of the Duran. We will be following this story because this is a really, really interesting one to, it's a huge, uh, to keep an eye It's on. a huge story. It's yeah, a huge story. A we haven't had something like this happen for a while, actually. And um, in, in a sense that the fact that it's happening now is, quite, is very interesting in, in itself. Absolutely. And that connection that you made with Bell and Cat is also a very interesting connection. I, I haven't heard anyone actually uh, no. make that connection, but it, it sounds very plausible indeed. Alexander yeah. McCurris, editor in chief of the Durant. Thank you very much. Guys, if you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below and click that notifications bell to make sure you get notifications every time we push out a new video. Visit the Durant shop, pick up a T-shirt. It really helps us out a lot. And you can also donate to us, PayPal and Patreon. Links are in the description down below. And don't forget, you can get a copy of this video in audio format at iTunes and SoundCloud. And remember, guys, go to thedurant.com and you will see all the articles that Alexander reads on a daily basis. He links them up for you right there on thedurant.com. So visit the site, take a look. Until next time, everybody, take care.